ahead and get started. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, well, I'll just start with uh, welcome everybody. I know it's been since uh, this last fall since we had our last meeting. I hope everybody had a great holiday season. Um, we've reached a exciting point in this um, project where we're getting ready to kick off our second round of public outreach. Um, I'm excited about that. I hope you are all are too. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Jared. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, um, welcome back, everyone. It's been a little while since we've seen all of you. And so first of all, uh, thanks for taking some time this afternoon. Um, we really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Let's see here. All right. Can everyone see that slide? Yes. All right. Perfect. Um, well, uh, as we so we got get a, for, a few more people um, that are going to be joining us. I figure we would would start by welcoming everyone. Um, the kind of our our agenda for today is starting with welcome back. Uh, you've been a part of this for over a year now, and so uh, we've got uh, we've got work to show you, but um, you're not you're not finished yet. And so we we look forward to your continued engagement. Um, we're going to start today just to kind of get things rolling and um, have some conversation with a little bit of a game. Um, I'm going to break us into groups here shortly. Um, but before that, uh, we'll, we'll talk through the, the agenda after we come back from our game. Um, one of our big next steps is developing some recommendations. And so we don't want just recommendations, but we want prioritized recommendations and how to start and where to go next. So we're going to talk through some of the criteria with all of you in a little bit more detail than we did in our previous meeting. Um, we're also going to talk about the public input survey that is going to be live for all of you. Uh, today after this meeting, we'll be sending out some information as well as the next steps. And so um, quick quick review um, is just last time we spoke was in September. Um, hard to believe that was multiple months ago. Um, either time flies or it's going really slow. It depends on, I guess, the day. Uh, but at that meeting, we talked through some of the project schedule. We looked at our existing conditions as well as reviewed ultimately the summary of what we had received in the public input. And that was really kind of the first opportunity for public input. Um, we, we discussed the trail classifications and got some really good feedback from all of you. And then I would say kind of introduced prioritization. Um, we're gonna talk about that in more detail today and gonna ask all of you for more feedback as well. But as we kind of get started, and I mentioned, um, we're going to play a game called Name That Greenway. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Ashley and break you into some groups. She's going to explain some of the rules, and, uh, and then we'll get going. All right. Awesome. So as Joe just said, we're going to start with a fun trivia game. You'll be broken into groups and teams, and each team will be put into a breakout room with a facilitator. So in your breakout room, your facilitator will lead your team through Greenway Trivia. You'll be shown a picture of a trail and given about 30 seconds as a team to collaborate and propose an answer. So like most trivia games, you can only put forward one answer. Um, again, you'll have about 30 seconds to do this. And after that, your facilitator will share what the correct answer is and lead you through a discussion on recommendations that you think could make that trail even better. Um, there'll be five rounds of, of the, the trail trivia. So uh, don't exhaust yourselves on the first few marathon, not a sprint. Um, Jared's gonna be keeping all of the facilitators on track. He'll be sending messages to the breakout groups to make sure that we're all able to get through all five rounds. Um, and just a few reminders for our facilitators if you're wondering if you're a facilitator, you're probably not one, um, you know who you are. You, you'll um, be entering your group's guests for each trail into the spreadsheet that we've sent you already. If you don't have access to it or are having challenges with that, let us know. Um, 
remember to record your session when you get in and to take notes during the, the discussion. And also pay attention to the banner at the top of the screen where Jared's um, nudges to continue and move to the next slide will show up. Um, Jared, how are you doing? Almost there. Almost there. Almost there, hold on one second. All right. So there, are, like I said before, there are five rounds. So that means there'll be five different Greenway photos and we'll be really curious to see which ones kind of can be more difficult for folks. So when we all return from our breakout sessions, we'll, we'll do a quick review and, and Jared will give us some, some of the stats from everyone's group, groups. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there. Sorry, everyone. People no are joining. Worries. Oh yeah, we've got some, it can be a challenge to, to get all the breakout groups, groups uh, sorted out right away. This gives you time though to think, you know, what are all of the possible greenway trails in the city system? There's, there's quite a few, um, lots of potential. All right, we're ready. Here we go. I'm gonna send all of you, um, remember, record your sessions for the um, breakout group leaders. We will see you shortly.
Is it Kara? Kara? Yes. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm good. Hey, I'm going to assign you. We're in breakout okay. groups. Yep. I playing, saw that in the, yep. Playing a game. I'm going to assign you to one. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. All yep. right. Bye. Bye. Hey, Sally. Hi, so I, I, I got dropped off. Do you remember whose group you were in? Four. Four? Okay, I'll move you there right now. Thank you. Yep.
Hey, Jared, I apologize. I've had to jump on and off twice. Once I didn't realize that it was like you guys having your internal meeting. And then no the second time I got a call that I needed to take. So we got to leave. Not a big to deal. That situation now. So apologies. It's all good. We are actually, I'm about to close the rooms right now. So not, not a problem. How are you doing? All right. No complaints. Good. Juggling good. like everybody. Yeah, I get that. All right, I'm just going to close these all and bring everybody back together. There we go. Welcome okay. back, welcome back. Yeah. What was the what was the hardest photo? My team was smart. They knew everything. There they was no I told them that you uh, told us that the Walnut Creek uh, was going to be probably the most challenging. That was not challenging for them at all. They knew everything. We're one hundred percent right on all. But I think you had you had Eleanor and Beverly on your in yes. your group, and I yeah. feel like that's uh, you know the randomizer of Zoom maybe didn't work in <laughs> in our favor there. Well, my team was smart also, but we still would like to know exactly where that Walnut Creek photo was taken. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That um, that's so. Kansas. That photo was taken um, right near the the wetland uh, wetland center. If you look closely, you can actually see kind of the the slanted roof of the wetland center. So it's looking back at it. Um, those the bird houses are always what, what like uh, trigger my mind that like they had. There's so many bird houses right next to that area. Um, so it was it was great. Perfect. I think it looks like we've got everybody back. Uh, I'll ask all the facilitators. You can stop your recording since I'm recording um, the larger meeting. And I will jump back in to sharing my screen. All right. So that last one was the Rocky Branch. Um, so I, I got some. I, I think that everybody got. Uh, you, everybody got at least one right, I'm sure. So I'll, uh, but I hope that the conversation was good, um, you know, along with just playing a game and kind of getting an opportunity to, to chat with one another. Again, like I said, uh, Zoom randomized those things. So um, the fact that Beverly and Eleanor were in the same group, maybe not fair, but that's okay because other groups had people like Paul Black in them. So um, anyway, I appreciate you doing that, we do have another opportunity for you to give us some input here in just a little bit. So uh, don't, don't check out on us yet. But next we wanna, we wanna talk through uh, some of the prioritization criteria. Like I said before, we, 
we kind of gave all of you uh, an overview of this information or maybe just kind of uh, a little bit higher level the last time that we all spoke. But what we wanted to do today was walk through each one of these criteria. I, I do wanna say, even though we're walking through them in this presentation, this is a component of the public input survey. And so you'll be able to dive into this a little bit more um, after this meeting, but we wanted to at least give this opportunity to, to talk through a few things here. Um, so with that said, uh, we've got nine different criteria and, and some of the, the background on this, I think that we have a great start. You know, it wasn't building these prioritization criteria from, from scratch. Uh, the, the parks bond used a lot of criteria that we are basically leveraging a lot of that work. Um, I think that was so great about this being the background and having this, the prioritization criteria developed was that there was a lot of thinking about why it mattered to our community. Um, what, what I always say about priority projects is that you wanna be able to point to the things that you value coming through in those projects. And I think that the parks bond criteria had already done a lot of that work and thinking through those components. And so what we have done is we've taken those criteria and we've modified some of them to be a little bit more specific to the greenways. Um, some of them are almost identical because they are still values that kind of hold true across whether it's you know, larger park system or the Greenway plan specifically. But we also modified some of them just to be in line with best practice, um, making sure that we are really elevating some of the components that we believe are important when it comes to, to Greenways. And I think that there are two pieces that are at play here. Uh, we, one, want to make sure that the Greenway system continues to benefit, you know, all of our residents. Um, and you'll see some of those kind of uh, themes throughout these criteria, but we also want to make sure that, you know, it, it does the, the work of being both recreational and an expansion to our transportation system, which is, so you'll see that specifically identified. So with that, I'm going to kind of, the, the big picture, like I said, we have nine of these criteria. We're going to walk through each one of these individually so that you can see, um, a little bit more detail about what it is. Um, and this is even higher level than some of the documentation that's on the survey, but uh, at least give you a glimpse and then get some of your feedback. So uh, we also have kind of assigned some weights or some maximum scores to each one of the criteria. Um, the nice thing about all of these things adding up to 100 is that you can really think about them as representing a percentage. And so, you know, Greenway access being valued at about 20% of the total score. Um, and some of, I think the, the beauty of what was done in the, the parks bond criteria is that because there's some overlap, it doesn't feel like they're just isolated pieces that just because it has 20%, it doesn't touch another component. So some of these things do um, kind of relate to one another. So I'm going to run through the first five and I'm going to hand it over to Ashley to talk through some of the, um, the rest of the, the criteria. So the first is Greenway access uh, as part of the parks bond criteria and ultimately some of the great work that our um, parks recreation and cultural resources department has done in developing a level of service model. One of the components in that model is the nearest Greenway score or Greenway access uh, looking at census blocks identifying where there are greenway, greenway access points and ultimately breaking that into a number of kind of categories um, to score them. What we would say is that even, you know, we range scores from one being low to high being 20. So that's the 20%, um, but it's kind of inverted in the fact that a, a, what would receive a high score for prioritization for the greenway would be those areas that do not have a lot of greenway access. Um, thinking through projects that would be priority, providing more access to our community um, is, is how we would be thinking about that. The, and you'll see a little bit more about that score and that model in one of the few, the later criteria. 
The next is equity. And um, this also is kind of built into that level of service model and um, builds upon the community vulnerability index for Wake County. Um, you can see there are specific inputs when it comes to uh, communities in our in the city of Raleigh and ultimately across Wake County that we wanna make sure that we're prioritizing that maybe have been um, underrepresented in the past. And so um, you can see some of those inputs being unemployment, uh, poverty rate, age dependency, educational attainment and housing vacancy. And so in the same way, uh, we've, we've given this a, a higher weight of up to 20% for the highest categories. And we've created a seven different kind of uh, thresholds um, with that range being one to 20. And in the same way that we find those census blocks that have more communities of vulnerable people that we want to rate those, we want to give them a higher score so that if there are projects that fall within those census blocks within that lo those locations, that they're going to be prioritized above those that maybe have, um, you know, a, a very small percentage that of communities that are, are vulnerable. And so uh, I think this is another criteria that we, we built upon um, from the parks, parks bond criteria um, and one that we believe that needs to be weighted um, fairly heavily to make sure that we're prioritizing projects in the right locations throughout our city. The next two criteria, you're gonna see public input. And this comes from uh, what we've heard in that kind of first round of input where we were listening and kind of wanting to understand uh, what the community wants and desires. Uh, if you remember, we had thousands of comments and points um, and respondents for that public input survey. And so we've broken this into two categories. One, and this first one, being trail reinvestment. We looked at comments and really kind of combed through and collected those comments to understand which ones are speaking to our existing trail system and where there might need to be up upgrades or there's specific locations that maintenance may be required. And so what we wanted to do was kind of aggregate those, um, the scores for those separately than the comments that I'll show you in a moment. And so what we've done is we've created a range from one to 10, uh, thinking through the, the places that we were seeing more and more comments, the, the highest density of comments around trails that needed improvements um, or upgrades, those are gonna receive the highest scores um, so we can understand are there places, again, across our system that the public, that our community says we need more in this location um, and we can prioritize those appropriately. The second one, and this map is kind of an illustration of all of those comments that we started to hear. Um, and it can, it can seem like a mess, but a lot of these lines started to overlap about new connections. And so in, this, in a similar way, we looked through those comments, made sure, are there, where are we seeing um, redundancies? Where are we seeing that comment come up again and again about a connection from here and to here? And we, we started to identify those with the highest density and created there another category for um, public input and new connections with the same amount of weight, but ultimately um, being able to identify some of these trails that could create these new connections and giving them uh, the appropriate points. So when we are prioritizing projects, maybe it does connect to certain um, communities or it does connect to some of these other criteria as well as it being a new connection that was identified in our survey. The last criteria that I'll talk through um, before handing over to Ashley is adopted plans. Um, the city of Raleigh has done a number of planning efforts across the city, whether that is uh, citywide or specific small areas. And what we want to recognize is that while we are doing public engagement at a citywide level, um, there may be certain pockets in our community that were engaged in previous processes that have given really valuable input. And so uh, we we believe that some of these previous efforts have captured those voices, have done some of the analysis. And so if our greenway systems, whether that's a new connection or an update um, or an extension is mentioned in a, in a previously adopted plan, we want to at least give some points, some weight 
to the work that's already been done, um, recognizing that this is, you know, basically we're, we're kind of vetting some of the work that they've already done through the Greenway Master Plan update. And so you can see there's a, a smaller weight, but it doesn't mean that, again, some of the things that we've heard in these previously adopted plans are the same things that we're seeing in our analysis, as well as in the public input that we received. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ashley to talk through the last four. Thank you, Jared. Okay, so the next category is future density. And this is really thinking about um, the city's comprehensive plan and what areas of the city they anticipate will have really targeted growth. So for this uh, prioritization criteria, trails that are passing through uh, specific growth areas that are identified in the comprehensive plans growth framework would get an extra five points. And if the trail segment doesn't pass through that, it doesn't get any points at all. All right, next slide, please. Okay, and the next category is transit. This is really thinking about the proximity of the Greenway Trail to one, high frequency bus routes and high frequency as defined as you know the, the Go Rally defines it, which is um, every 15 minutes during peak hours. And we're also looking at the proposed BRT routes um, for the future. So there are two scoring categories and that is looking at whether the trail is a quarter mile or a half mile from those corridors where there is high frequency bus service as well as BRT. And the scores range from one to 10 for those. Next slide. Okay, and overall park level of service, this is another category that's coming out of the parks level of service model. This specific category is a, a summary of all of the categories that are, are combined into the level of service model. So looking at the distance to the closest park, distance to the closest greenway, ac acres of open space that are nearby, and the variety of park experiences are all summarized to create a score or a grade for different um, areas of the city. It's broken into five categories, and just like the other um, level of service model prioritization criteria, we're, we're looking at how they range in terms of less or, or more um, level of service or a higher or lower grade. And we'd be assigning higher um, scores so that like 10 highest score is to the parts of the city that are, have the lowest current um, overall level of service grade. The last category is active transportation. This is looking at how trails link with the existing um, and proposed bikeways as they're written in the bike rally plan. The scoring is, is a little complex. There are two components. One is, does it link to something at all that is existing or proposed? And two, it's looking at what is the type of facility that is being proposed? Is the greenway linking to a completely separated facility or is it linking to a shared you know, street? So those are assigned different scores based off of whether it's a higher comfort facility meant for people of all ages and all abilities and um, whether it's existing already or proposed in the future. Thanks, Ashley. And so yeah. um, really just kind of walking through those, but we wanna hear from you and we, we've done this in the past. We've used the Mentimeter. Um, so if you have your cell phone, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and get it out. Um, here is the, the code that we're going to um, minty.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. And our code is 69, 90, 87, and three. It's right there at the top of the screen. Hopefully all of you can see that. Once you get there, um, go ahead and give the, the thumbs up. I'll wait until we have kind of our um, critical mass and then we'll, we'll get started. All right. Give everybody a 
A few more seconds here. I think we've got, again, minty.com. Here we go, we've got a few more coming in. 69, 90, 87, and three. All right, we'll go to this first question. Again, this will be at the top of the screen if you get there a little bit late and uh, need that code. All right. Here we go, practice question. Make sure everybody um, knows what we're doing. Uh, what's your favorite meal of the day? Just coffee, uh, which is my answer. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you don't really have a favorite because you like to snack all day. All right, quite a few breakfast people. That's great. Um, I apologize, dinner, dinner people are probably already thinking about dinner. Um, awesome, well, that was our practice. Now we'll get to kind of a, a little bit more related to the prioritization. So this is a question about how you would, how much you agree with the following statement. The way the prioritization criteria are described makes sense to me. And we definitely understand that there's um, a, you know, more information that you probably don't have, but thus far, I can't, we're trying to just kind of gauge and I do, I agree, Nick, brunch is the best. Um, so I apologize, I should have, I knew I should, I forgot something. Again, how much do you agree that the way that they're, they're being described makes sense? It's kind of a little bit of just a initial check for us. All right, now let's give a little bit more detail here. Um, in your opinion, is there anything missing? And you know, what you'll notice about our criteria is that they were, they're kind of, they're trying to capture a lot. It wasn't something, um, we weren't trying to drill down too, too specific, although some of them have some, some detail. Um, if, there's, if there's anything that you feel is missing, feel free to add it here. I think this is kind of open-ended. Do you need to add more than one? Um, we're open, open to suggestions. And you'll also have an opportunity to add information um, in the, the survey later if, if this question gets you thinking. Deferred maintenance, yeah. All right. Do a few more seconds. Yep, ecological or environmental benefit. Rehabilitation. Yeah, the connectivity of parks and of parks to the greenway kind of has maybe we can at least make that description a little bit stronger. Wildlife corridors. Safety. Yep, I think we can be a little bit more explicit about that piece. Shade, probably going, I think definitely has something to do with our environmental benefit. Marketability. Homeless encampments, I'm, I'm guessing that's um, related to like safety security is, is my guess. Free to send, us, you know, send some more information in the chat. All right, major attractions, destinations. Yeah, we're trying to capture some of those pieces. Um, Hopefully, regional connections, retailers and restaurants, yep. Environmental quality, 
This is great. Destinations in the future. Yeah, hopefully some of that, those growth areas will capture some of those pieces too. So these are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, and I think that the comment from Beverly around distinction between bikeways and greenways being clarified, um, kind of more, more, uh, more concrete kind of definitions for those. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one. Okay, so, um, and let me see, can I show this image? I'm gonna show this one more time, here we go. Um, so here's the weights. Uh, do you think that the prioritization criteria are weighted appropriately? And I think that um, we're asking about these specifically. I think that some of the comments that you just had obviously um, are things for us to, to think about and review. Uh, so but for this, simply yes, no, or you're just not sure. And we'll give you a chance to, to give us a little bit more input on that in just a moment. I'll leave this up for until I get a few more responses. All right, let's see where we're, again, are they weighted appropriately? Let's see where we're at. So we got, you know, kind of a mix, um, several yeses, not really sure. Um, I think that's completely appropriate. Um, and then and then I think for no, I'm hoping that those of you that said no have some, some thoughts on where we can kind of push and pull some of these weights and we're gonna give you that chance at this very moment. So here's here's the next one, and we broke this into two different slides. So these are the five criteria that I um, uh, presented a little bit earlier. And I what I did was include the percentage that they are at now. Um, I, each one of these is going to give you a one to ten. Five, if you respond as a five, that would be indicating that you would think that the weight is completely fine as is. So. Um, Kind of the push and the pull would be, you know, less weight, a lower number, lower than five, um, and what and to what degree, and then more weight, greater than five, um, to what degree being ten. Jared, can you just quickly remind us what's in the Greenway Access bucket? Yep, Greenway Access is looking at census blocks and um, identifying Greenway Access points within those census blocks. So. The way we would measure this is that the census blocks with the fewest greenway access points would be scored the highest from a priority standpoint. Um, ultimately, aligning with some of the, the work that um, the Parks and uh, Parks Rec and Cultural Resources Department is trying to really provide more and more access to parks and greenways throughout our city. Give you a few more seconds here before we move, we move to the next one. All right, great. I'm gonna move to the next one. So again, these were the first five. We have those 
um, the next five or next four. Uh, so future density. And remember, Ashley mentioned those are those growth areas that were identified. Um, transit, and that is specifically um, high frequency transit, that park level of service, which is more encompassing of kind of overall park access and um, within those census blocks, and then active transportation, um, dealing with really the the fact that corridors along um, the system can be used to to access destinations for trips that are outside of just recreational use, more utilitarian. Give a few more seconds here. Fantastic. Um, Thanks again for all of your input there. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch back to another screen. Here we go. Um, we kind of ran through these questions already. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna talk, to, talk about, and I'm gonna turn this back to Ashley, is to talk about the public input survey, um, which is something that's gonna be coming your way this afternoon. Ashley. Awesome, thank you, Jared. So as, um, we mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, it's been about a year since we met with you all at the first official steering committee meeting. And during that time, we have uh, done a lot of work. So you can go to the next slide, Jared. Um, we have reviewed previous plans and other documents that are relevant to the Greenway system. We've analyzed the existing conditions of traveling to and along the Greenway trails as well as inventoried um, amenities on Greenway trails. We've reached out to the public to gain a better understanding of their experiences with the Greenway system and desires for the future of the system. And as, as we just discussed, we have also drafted prioritization criteria to help guide us in organizing recommendations that are um, developed in the future. So before we dive into that nitty gritty of uh, process of identifying and prioritizing recommendations, we wanted to take the opportunity to check in with you and the community at large to really make sure that we've gotten everything right so far. So we are providing an additional opportunity for feedback before we start that recommendations development process. We've created a survey that contains links to summary documents that summarize the plans that we've reviewed, the existing conditions, the public outreach, and the prioritization criteria. And we will be sending out the survey to you today, um, sometime after this meeting. It will be open to the public from February 10th to March 3rd, so you're getting kind of a, a first shot at looking through the documents and, and really being able to give your feedback now. Um, and I also just want to highlight that there will be many more opportunities for public input on the process beyond this, but we wanted to do a quick check-in before we move forward. So Jared is going to highlight um, what the survey looks like, I believe. I'm working on it. Here we go. No worries. All right, can awesome. you see that? There you yeah. go. So this is what the survey looks like. There are different screens. The, the first little chunk of text is just kind of summarizing what I just said, because um, you know members of the public might not have all the context that you do. And um, it introduces four documents that are, are linked throughout the survey. And um, each section has a brief description and a hyperlink to the document. The hyperlink will open 
the document in um, another tab and you can read the document, look over it, and then kind of return back to the tab with the survey and do any of the questions that are associated. You don't have to complete the questions to move to the next step. Um, so if you review something and have nothing to provide, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so for the existing conditions, I did want to highlight that there are two different links. One is to the actual document that is the existing conditions analysis with all of the text and charts and maps. And then because the city of Raleigh is so large and we're covering a lot of area, we've kind of created a larger version of all of the maps that are contained in the existing conditions analysis. So it is at the um, second hyperlink that you can click. And you can go through each section and then if you get to the end and you're like, oh no, I wanna go back before I submit the survey, you can go backwards too to any previous section um, and click on any of the links. Great, so as I mentioned before, this is not the last time you'll be able to provide input. There will be future opportunities. In April, we're going to ask the community to review the recommendations that we develop. And this will include um, trail recommendations that are prioritized, amenities and policy components. And then we're anticipating that in July, we'll have a, a draft plan to release and have opportunities for you and the rest of the community to provide feedback on that as well. Thanks, Ashley. Um, I did want to just reiterate that that survey um, is, is not the end. Um, and we will be sending out the link to everyone, uh, all of the, the steering committee right after this meeting so that you all have it um, with a little bit more detail on kind of what those the next steps are and kind of the timeline for the public. Uh, we also um, wrote in there specifically for the uh, in the survey to make sure that anybody in the public knows that this is not the end, um, that that we will be coming back to them for more um, input on recommendations as well as the draft plan. So um, we we don't want anybody to feel like uh, they've they've missed too much to give input. Um, this is still there's it's always a good time to give input, and so we'll wrap things up today um, before just kind of general uh, question and answer comment with some of the next steps. You've heard us talk about it um, quite a bit today, but the next steps for us are developing those recommendations. Uh, we, we didn't wanna take the step all the way into recommendations, even though we have some preliminary ideas based on feedback and analysis, but we wanna make sure that this public input survey that's going out in February kind of gives us the support to move forward, that we've gotten things right, that the um, kind of the snapshot of what is today and what want, what people want to be done, um, that we have that clear. Uh, once we develop those recommendations, we'll be coming back to you and we'll be giving the Parks Board an update as well as going to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee to really hear feedback and make sure that we can refine those recommendations before we develop the draft plan the draft plan is another opportunity. If you missed the opportunity on recommendations and still wanted to give input, we're going to come back again for more feedback and um, refinement. And coming back to this group, the Parks Board again, the BPAC, as well as an update to City Council. Uh, right now, we are hopeful that um, we're going to be pushing forward toward op uh, adoption of the, the Greenway Master Plan um, in late summer of 2021. Um, as Ashley mentioned, you've all been with us for a year. Uh, things have changed a lot in a year. And we, we um, have shifted schedules to make sure that we hear from more people. We've changed our techniques and approaches. And um, we will continue to do so to make sure that we're hearing voices and uh, getting the recommendations that make the, the most impact and benefit our community in the best way possible. But we also feel pretty confident that late summer 2021 um, is a great target and that we can make that happen. So stay tuned. Um, you're still your seat at the table is very important. And we really want to make sure that our table gets bigger and bigger as we get this, um, the information out to more and more people across our community um, and hear their voices. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. 
Um, we, we knew that today's meeting was going to be a little bit shorter just because of the fact that a lot of this information you've either seen or you've um, given some input on originally. But um, we, we definitely want to, to hear from you. If there are any questions, uh, feel free to send them in the, the chat box. Or if you want to unmute, um, you're welcome to do that as well. We also want to be um, aware of your time. Uh, we can be here as long as all of you want to talk, at least until four, that is. Um, and then, uh, but if, if you do have other engagements, I know a, a few people have already dropped off. Um, feel free to do that as well. With that, I'll, I'll open it up. <clears throat> Jared, you did a fantastic job of answering any possible questions anyone could have. That's, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I know that uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that again, there's a lot more information to come for everyone. Um, the documents that we're gonna be sending out as part of the survey, um, please provide your, your feedback. It's, it's really valuable for us. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's really foundational for recommendations to make sure that we get some of this stuff um, accurate and it reflects what our community thinks and feels. Jared? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Beverly. Is there, yeah, so we're getting this now. It's going out to the public in two weeks. Um, is there any value purpose or desire for us to give you feedback that would in any way adjust the survey or is that not what you're, you just want us to do the survey? I think that we would like you to do the survey. If you feel like there's a kind of something that's not understood um, in the survey component, that feedback would be really valuable. I would say, go ahead and send either me or Chris an email about that directly so that we can make those updates. Um, you know, a lot of this information is, is things that you, this group has already seen. And so we just wanna make sure that we're communicating what it is that the public are um, able to review and the information that, the feedback that we would like back from them. So if you, Beverly, if you're going through or any of you are going through and something doesn't quite make sense, um, please send us that input. And how will this be distributed to the public? That's a great question. So we are going to kind of blast it out on listservs. We, for all of those that um, signed up for their email as part of the original survey, which again was uh, over a thousand, um, thousands, um, we're going to send them an email directly. We're gonna use the community organizations that we had kind of started to partner with when COVID hit and they were doing some work to kind of get more information out. Um, and then we're gonna depend on all of you to use your networks and uh, send out the link. Um, and if there's any other ways that we can think of or that you can think of, uh, we'd be happy to, to do that as well. Uh, all of this information will be on, once it goes live to the public on the, the Raleigh's Greenway Master Plan um, webpage. But um, that's- and we'll, also, we'll also be doing a press release through right. our marketing department. And then with that, they'll be able to send out um, notifications through all the social media outlets as well. All right. Well, I will, uh, I will just let everyone go. I really appreciate all of you. Um, we'll stay on for, for a few minutes, but um, looking forward to seeing you all again. Like I said, April is just around the corner and uh, we'll talk to you again very soon. Uh, look for an email from us this afternoon on, uh, with, the, with the link to the survey. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Jared, I'll stay on for a minute.